Hey guys, it is a beautiful day in December. Let's check out what David's got for us. David's was really hopping today. I've never seen them have so much business, which is really nice to see. And they also seem like they just restocked after Christmas, so they had a lot of really neat stuff today that um, picked up a few goodies, but I had to definitely restrain myself from picking up everything that caught my interest. So, as always, if you live in the greater New Orleans area, you should check out David's Art Supply. It's one of the best art supply stores in the area, and it's locally owned. So, no offense, Michaels, no offense, Walmart, all offense Hobby Lobby, you should be giving your business to David's instead. Okay, so I got back from David's just a little while ago and I wanted to show you guys what goodies I picked up while at David's Art Supply today. So I received a $40 David's gift card as part of my Christmas this year. I did not show that in the haul because I received it today, but $40 at David's can go a pretty long way. So not all of this was purchased with the gift card, but it definitely made a dent in the end transaction. So let's take a look at what's inside the yellow David's bag. All right, so in our distinctive yellow bag, we have something my mom picked out as something she'd like to do during one of our chill streams. So this is something to look forward to on a Monday afternoon. We have a Langton Prestige watercolor book. I really like Langton Prestige watercolor paper and I've used it before. And I've been wanting to do more watercolor studies. So I find that watercolor sketchbooks like this one kind of allow me to do those studies and keep them all in one place. I also picked up some larger hockey brushes. I enjoy using these for like soft washes and they tend to be pretty affordable for larger natural fiber brushes. I picked up some miniature brushes for finer detail work. I picked up the Claire Fontaine Carnet de Voyage travel album and it says it's 83 pound drawing paper but it actually has a nice texture to it and I thought this would take watercolor pretty decently. I picked up some small alcohol ink panels because I have a lot of alcohol inks and I thought it'd be cool to do some of those like drip drop alcohol ink things. Um, I've never done them, but when I used to teach Copic classes, people would ask about those techniques all the time. So I thought it'd be nice to be able to put my alcohol links to an alternate use and try something new and maybe, I don't know, experiment a little, do something different. And these are released by Ranger and these seem to be like MDF boards with a coating on them. I also picked up some very bright pink alcohol inks. They did not have any co empty Copic sketches though. That's something I really enjoy doing is getting empty Copic sketch markers and then filling them with pretty alcohol ink colors from other brands. Some of my favorite colors that you guys see me use again and again are actually self-filled Copic sketch markers. So those of you who know me in person know that I love Coombe sharpeners, but the sharpenings, the 
sharpened pencil shavings just tend to get all over my studio and all over the floor. So this hopefully will solve that problem. It kind of combines the best of both. We get your magnesium comb sharpener. These are really great, okay? Like for people who really struggle with like Prismacolor pencils constantly snapping, a better sharpener can sometimes make the difference. And then it has just a little glass bottle to kind of hold the shavings in place so it shouldn't be able to leak. picked up a couple new tubes of PWC. So something I really like about, P well, first of all, I've talked about PWC on this channel. I really like this brand. It's Shin Han's highest quality watercolors and uh, David offers these at a really, really like bonkers inexpensive price. These are professional grade watercolors, but they charge like student grade price for them. And they know what they've got. They know what they're doing. They're hoping that by introducing more people to these watercolors, there'll be more of a demand for it. So they've off they're offering them at a lower price to get people interested in them. But um, I really like these and I really like that price point. I picked up a this is kind of interesting. It's called a small wipe away tool and you can use it in like watercolor while the water is still wet to like drag lines into it. Um, it's a solvent resistant rubber tip so it shouldn't absorb anything and it should just wipe clean. And what you do is when the paper is still wet you can use it to draw like lines into these fields of wet watercolor. And then Finally, I picked up a couple more silver black velvet brushes. If you guys watch my stuff, you'll know I really like these brushes. I got a flat. I'm going to have to condition this one because it's got a mind of its own. And what's neat about the flat is it has a tapered edge, which similar to the rubber tool here, this, if you mark on wet watercolor, will leave kind of like... It's not like a perfectly white line, but it does create like a line in the watercolor. I also picked up um, a scripting brush. I think Mind of Watercolor talked about like riggers and scripting brushes as being some of his favorite brushes. So um, I haven't really played around with these too much. I only own one other one and it's a super cheap Princeton snap brush, but I really like the silver black velvet brushes. They're affordable. They're a mix of natural and synthetic fibers and they're kind of taken over my watercolor collection because I really like them so much. So I thought, you know, I'll try one of their scripting brushes and see if I like that as much as I like their other brushes. And then finally I picked up a few more of the Caran d'Ache Museum Aquarelle watercolor pencils. You guys have heard me talk about these before as well. And what makes these, these are expensive, but what makes these cool is they're using professional grade watercolor pigments in the pencils. So they have the same kind of react, you get like full color reactivation when you put water on them. They're fairly buttery, you get really rich color and they granulate like watercolor. So to me, these are like the Cadillac of watercolor pencils. I've tried quite a few. These are really super nice. So I am slowly building up a collection of those. So these days on the channel for about the past year, if I do reviews when I do reviews. It's products that I've already like started playing with and that I really like and that I want to share with you guys rather than, you know, just buying something to see if I'll like it. It tends to be a little bit more of a sure thing. I try to avoid uh, buying things that I think I'll hate because that's just a waste of money and we're just putting negativity out into the world when we do that. I mean, the manga kit was obviously, <laughs> obviously not going to be something I was going to love, but I was kind of hopeful about the manga kit because some of the other five below kits I'd reviewed, I really liked. They really surprised me. So I was kind of hopeful and a little disappointed by that one. But um, generally these days when I buy art supplies, they're things I'm already somewhat familiar with. Like I've been using Ranger Adirondack paints for a while. I use them in my Copic marker, well, in my empty Copic markers. Um, I like the price point. I like the colors. The colors are often a little bit different than what Copic offers. And I think it's neat to be able to kind of fill empty Copic markers with whatever colors I happen to like. I could use the Brea Reese. I could use alcohol inks used for resin. I could use Jacquard. I have used Jacquard alcohol inks 
in these. Um, it's not necessarily the most price economical because empty Copic sketch markers are almost as expensive as regular Copic sketch markers. Sometimes they're more because they're actually increasingly harder to find. But it's really more about getting the kind of colors I want rather than just saving money. And then, you know, once you have that Copic sketch, you can refill it pretty easily. But hopefully these, these sort of hauls, um, they're not necessarily intended to be like, look at all the stuff I'm going to review. But I know people enjoy seeing what other people are buying at art supply stores. And these kind of videos tend to be my most popular videos. So I don't mind sharing them with you guys when I there's a place I want to support and I think it's really cool. And that would definitely be David's Art Supply. I've been going to David's since I was like 14. I'm 34 now. So I've given them a lot of business over the years. Their staff is knowledgeable. They're very friendly. The owners are knowledgeable. They're very nice people. Um, it's named after their Weimaraner dogs. So they're animal people too. They always have... It's, <laughs> I love David's because it is very much like a smaller store and it's just crammed with art supplies. Like as you guys could see from the little in-store video I recorded, little video film I recorded, uh, it's crammed with stuff and like Christmas was just behind us and they restocked like that. So um, I feel like they're always going out of their way to try and find neat things or new things or things you definitely couldn't get at like Michael's or any of the other big box chain art and craft stores in the area. So I love giving David's my support. I love buying from them and I love telling you guys about David's because you know it's a surprising number of Louisianians don't know about that store and I think they would really enjoy shopping there and find stuff that they like. So um, I, let's just call it um, returning the favor. I like the customer service of David's, so I'm returning the favor by pointing new customers in their direction. So if you live in a not, if you don't live in the greater New Orleans area, I should say, what is your favorite art supply store? Where do you swear by? Is it an online source like Flick or Jerry's Artorama? Is it someplace that you go in person? Is it a tiny mom and pop local joint? Or is it a giant nationwide chain? Let me know down in the description below. When it's not COVID, Joseph and I do travel for shows. And every time I go to a new city, I love checking out the art supply stores there. And I particularly love checking out locally owned art supply stores. So if you guys have a favorite art supply store, give them a shout out down in the comments below. Who knows? Maybe I've been there too and we can we can bond over how amazing that shop is. So again, if you live in the greater New Orleans area or if you're just in the area of New Orleans, I highly recommend you go by David's Art Supply and check them out. We are not affiliated. They are not a sponsor of the channel. I think the owner knows I review art supplies. I don't think she knows to what extent I review art supplies, um, but I've never tried to make it into any sort of a thing because I just kind of like the relationship we have now and I don't want to possibly taint it by being kind of pushy. But uh, as you guys can see, every time I go to David's, I end up finding a lot of really cool stuff and I think you guys will find a lot of cool stuff if you go there too. And if you're new to art supplies or if you're buying for someone you love and you don't know much about art supplies, their staff are really, really nice. They're very approachable. They're always eager to help. And the blonde guy, I'm sorry, I don't know his name. He knows a lot about like comics and drawing and watercolor and markers. So if you're one of my viewers and you're into that kind of stuff, look for that dude and he should be able to set you up. So I hope you guys enjoyed this David's Art Supply haul video. I hope I got those creative juices flowing. I hope I'll see you guys again really soon. Have a wonderful day, guys, and Happy New Year. Bye.